Yeah, I have always been curious when I'm doing research. I'm always like to see what's around the corner. Yummy. Hey. To do investigations that have been done before is of no interest. I uh, read an article in uh, a magazine about a man in Australia. He was treated for uh, a problem in his stomach or his intestines and this man happened to have Parkinson's disease and his Parkinson's symptoms went away. The neurologist couldn't find Parkinson's symptoms anymore. You were a curious patient to have picked up some information from down under. So that mm. triggered my interest. I mailed a Norwegian professor, Arnold Bersta. Since uh, I was aware of that microbes do interact upon compounds that are of basic importance in, in uh, Parkinson, it was a rational to investigate. They hadn't heard about a connection between Parkinson's disease and gut bacteria. I haven't thought about it, I shall admit that. And uh, three weeks ago I met Professor Tore Mitvet and Dr. Arnold Bersta. And Arnold happened to know that the Australian doctor who had done it. So he wrote to him and got the protocol and everything. And Arnold came to me and said, okay, Tore, shall we try? Shall we try to give it? In three days from now, I will be having the strangest soup I've ever had. Mm. Fecal transplant is very simple. You, you are then taking feces from one person and giving it to another. It has been done in, in uh, husbandry, it has been done for centuries. For, yeah. If a farmer has a sick horse, he take uh, feces from a healthy horse and give to that horse. And so that has been done all around the world. To give feces from man to man. It has been done in, I think, but unofficially. When, when you have a child, a newborn, that have disturbances, many places they have given healthy feces from a healthy newborn to that one without asking for permission. You just have to put in a tube, you can do it uh, through your nostril. Avföringsbakterier. We have cultivated that soup for at least 12 years or more. Has the soup been used against Parkinson's before? No, you were the first. I don't know how many million bacteria have been injected. I have to fart also. <laughs> it was stated, I think, a hundred years ago or something, that the gut has a brain, if not a mind of its own. It has an extremely high number of nerve cells, just as many down there that you have in, in, in your brain. This 
colony of bacteria that is in the soup will fight, kill off, flush out all or most of my gut bacteria. Oh, it smells nice. At least uh, the, the, they are partly taking over. And they also, they are eradicating the, the, the troublemakers. So that's the main concept that healthy microbes will take the, I will not call it the battlefield, but the field in the GI tract back, bring it back to normal again. Are, are the troublemakers causing Parkinson's? We don't know about the name of the troublemaker causing Parkinson's, but it may be that the troublemaker are interfering with a with normal amount of biogenic amine, as well as with the medicine that the Parkinson's patients are receiving. And we believe that it is of importance to have the microbe from above to reach it by orally. And it's much more convenient to have it through a tube than to drink it. If you have tried to drink it, you will realize it smells like, uh, it's not a nice smell on that soup. It's a funny feeling. Oh, it's... Yummy. It, it feels cold in your... Mm. The most important uh, brain nerve, nervous vagus, the twelves are going from the gut to the brain, to the most of the gut. And then he said flush, what's it called at the home cooking program? Come dine with me. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, uh, neurotransmitters acting in the, brain, in the gut will then send signal by that nerve to your brain. Starting to get used to this. It's a pizza cake for the flora if they are served the right compound to 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 produce biogenic amines. That's uh, L-dopa, it's serotonin, it's adrenaline, it's all the all the compounds that you are producing by yourself. It's hard to squeeze. Shit! I gotta call Arnold. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm gonna have to do is to pull it up a few centimeters and try again. This is going to explode in my face. Du får dra ut son och så sätta in igen och prova och dra ut. She's become a real nurse. If I pull too far, it will come out of the intestines. I didn't ask Arnold how far I could pull. Yeah. Men um, it's a man and uh tror No, but we have not protocols for picking up in that. And that's the reason we have no taking contact with people at the Parkinson's uh, department uh, at the Karolinska Hospital, just to establish a, a protocol so we can, f following very small alterations in your behavior. But that's difficult. That has caused us a lot of problems. The driving force here is just our own curiosity, nothing else.